yesterday a very quiet day in the market. Um, we hit both our potential resistance area and support areas, resistance in the morning, use that as an opportunity to short 267 and a quarter. Uh, it worked. Um, we then went down to our support area. That was later, later part of the day. I was not around for that. We did bounce. Um, we did spike below, it got back above, a little bit of retest, um, closed back above. So the market was, I thought, very resilient yesterday considering the negative headlines and um, spent the entire day really in the upper part of this range here um, between 266 and 268. And now we're gapping into 268 this morning. So we're very clearly set up um, to measure the strength. And again, you can still have all the marks from yesterday's meeting. Uh, but do we hold above this and make that hard move into here where we failed a few weeks ago? Um, obviously, we're not going to, well, anything's possible, but extremely unlikely that we'd be moving down into this area today. Um, and so that's that's kind of what's in play. Um, if we get sold from 268 on the open, then does yesterday's resistance become support? And that's you know, the support from here as well. So this area right here. So those are the two things to look at. Um, IWM above 158 this morning. I think this would be a trouble spot right here. After we put in the top here at 160, we, we couldn't hold above this 158 here. We spiked up again, couldn't. Then again here, April 18th. So this is definitely a, a tough area here above 158. We get sold in the open. I'm gonna see if we come back. We fail here. If we come off on the open and get back above this, um, 158 and a quarter, 158, 30. I'm gonna see if it moves sideways, fails to kind of break above this, and gets back down below. That's an IWM. Um, so a bunch of things in play today. First one I want to take a look is TWLO Twillo which was a very beaten down stock in the 30s and even got into the mid 20s where it seemed like it was a good long-term buy. It's now rallied up about 100% off the low, I guess. Um, and the thing that called my attention, I put it in the game plan notes, was they beat revenue by 12%. They're only raising fiscal year guidance by 6%. So although they raised guidance for the year, it's at a lower pace um, then they report for the quarter. Now, that doesn't just mean them being, them being conservative. Certainly, you know, even 50% off of, from the breakout area now. It's coming into here. It hasn't been here in years. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if there was some selling today on this. So, well, it looks like other people have the same idea at 48. They, they crushed it down $3. It's coming right back up here. Um, But yeah, I mean, any type of failure right in the open between 48 and 48 and a half, um, it gets below 48, you're short it. What you want to see is a very quick move down to at least 47 to this area here. 
then a failure to kind of rally back up. And then any type of consolidation below 47, driver's seat for the short side. Let's see what they were doing to it coming into earnings. So coming into earnings last couple of weeks. Okay, so it was down here. It was being bought at 37-ish. It was being bought at 39-ish. So it was definitely coming into earnings. People looking for it to be good. I guess worst case scenario is like somewhere in here. Whenever I say worst case scenario and it ends up being weak, it usually overshoots. So it probably ends up going to there and it probably bounces back to 45. So that would be kind of the 48 failure, failure scenario where it gets hit hard. Um, two potential balance points are here and here. Again, it hasn't been at these levels in a long, long time, multiple years. Um, if after in the last two days, a couple of things we were looking at intraday also, like they ended up being strong in the open and then they stayed up at the highs for like the first couple of hours. Then they broke to the downside. Yesterday was VRX, the day before it was Apple. Um, so don't be fooled if it is staying up here in the first hour or so. Um, if it establishes clear morning support and gets below that, you want to play it for a buck and a half, two dollar down move. Um, obviously, first move is down. It comes into this area here, 46, 60 or so, and holds. and starts to get back about 47 and holds. You can play it on the long side in that scenario. So I ran through a bunch of things there, but that's what we do. Pre-market kind of lay out the scenarios. Um, first choice, though, is on the short side. TRIP. Um, TRIP. So last quarter it did the same thing in terms of the gap. So the gap at the 46, it spiked right on the open above. Once it got below 46, it came off a lot. It came off like $4. So it's gapping right now to 45. It's gapping to pretty much right here. It still is in a longer term downtrend trying to kind of break out of that. Since I put in the low, it kind of got accumulated, got accumulated higher. I'm not sure what this catalyst was by weakness in the market. I mean, any type of close above 46 today, then the next real resistance is 50. The burden is on the buyers that approve that, you know, with this long of a downtrend to prove that you can hold up in this area up here. Next one is Monster MNST. Um, this one, I think I put the most salient point on in the notes, which was they, they had a large drop in gross profit. I don't know if that's from the acquisition they getting Coke or just overall the, the margins are getting in that sector, but um, it got several downgrades along with that. And so if we look at the trend from a year ago, it trended from the 40s all the way up to 70. And then this is where it got hit here back in February, um, late February when it broke below support area, it came all the way into the support area, she overshot. So now it's down to this next support area. And so it's steep. I mean, this is obviously a lot shallower than it's coming down at a lot faster rate than it went up. And based on the downgrades and based on the drop in the gross profit, um, I would say even if it popped back up, I'm going to be looking to short it. 
we're moving to 48 and then close below 48, 45, 46. What did I put on the sheet? So 48 for support, then 46 and a half, 47. So if it closes below support to you today, um, it'll probably be a good short tomorrow as well. I don't know if we're going to get a bounce again back up to here. I think we're bounce, bounce three dollars in the after hours, and lucky people are able to get sales up here. First thing I'll look for is pop right on the open. Does it fail at fifty? Fails at fifty, starts to hold below forty-nine. You play it for the after hours, after hours low. Um, match. So match we traded the other day on that craziness. Um, they reported very solid numbers. Really, the question is. At this point, are people going to start to ignore a little bit the um, Facebook coming into their space? For the people who are buying here at 34 to 36, going to use this gap up as a chance to sell. It's not that big of a gap up, so need to wait for it to rally up a little bit more. And we can see the low. Okay, so some people sold here already. On the way up here in February, it had pulled back to 3880s. And that's where I guess it got sold in the pre-market so far. So I guess the way I look at this is if it comes in on the open and it stays above 37, I would look for playing a bounce back up to the pre-market high. And then if it actually consolidated in this area and started to break to the upside, I'd make it play for a move to 40. That would be about as much as I'd look out of it. Would be kind of sad for it if it gets below 37 again. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't think I'd really trade it on the short side there. And then VRX. So yeah. So what we said about this one in the morning meeting yesterday is it would be tough for it to close above 20. Here's the longer term. And so sometimes one of the hardest things as a short-term trader, and um, I'm able to do this a little bit more probably than most of the people listening to this because. You haven't been looking at things on a longer term time horizon for a long time, but it's actually best to stay with the intraday trend um, 80, 90% of the time. But my thought process as it moved away from 20 back up towards 21, I did think it was possible to get to 21.30, 21.40, or have the hard down move to stay here back in January. Um, but that made me excited on the short side in the sense that I thought there was a really good chance it would close below. Well, I'd say I thought it was 50-50, it would close below 20. And so the more it got away from 20, the better the risk reward. And so it did fail at the January 25th high. January 25th high, it closed below 20. So it did the same thing in terms of where it closed. The question now becomes, um, does it do a soft gap fill or hard gap fill into this, this range here? Let's take a look. And again, if you're playing a conservative and just waiting for this, the big red bar here and waiting for that to short it, um, that was pretty clean as well, obviously. Below 2070 is the level we were using. And then once it got below there, using 2050 was okay. I'm playing it to like the opening low. It actually took that out. Um, so looking at it this morning, and see earlier it was already up at 20. So 20, what did I put on the sheet? 1990 to 20 and then 2030, which was where the second leg started one. So this was first down leg and this was second down leg um, in the afternoon. So these are the two spots that I've been looking at. Um, and downside obviously to here. And then soft gap fill is here. Um, SEAS, my alert went off at 18.50 yesterday. I did not take the short on that one. It was right on the open. Um, got hit pretty hard. This is definitely a, here's a soft gap fill on it. Kind of for that. Here's a gap fill.
If you didn't want to short right into the strength in the open, you were waiting to see something. A move starting to hold below 18. Um, and then really after that, weren't any good entry. I mean, unless you wanted to short it. After it got down towards 17 and you wanted to short it to this bar where it kind of broke down below 17.85, but it looks like it was there for a split second. But then it held the morning low and then held higher. So it looks like it might, it was gonna actually maybe reverse there. And the sellers took over again. So it closed, it closed at the bottom, bottom of the range. Um, yeah, so I put this area here as, you know, this is the resistance right here. We're spending a lot of the time consolidating middle of the day. So I would short a pop into this 1730 or higher. Um, also a consolidation below 17 if you wanted to short would be fine. Um, and then JD was weak. We caught a downgrade this morning from JP Morgan. So I had 37 as support yesterday. It did hold there all the way until at 2.20 in the afternoon. So below the support area here, if this morning it breaks below it, when a short comes back um, and play possibly all the way down back down to 35. So um, I'm gonna resistance. And I put 37.50 as the first resistance. But if it were to pop like above 37 to like 37.15 here, and then started to hold below 37, that would be interesting to me as well. Hope you enjoyed that video. You can actually watch that video if you're subscribed to our Trader 90 before the market even opens. What stocks are in play? What levels in those stocks are important? And how we might go about attacking that stock? That's Steve Spencer, 20 year veteran trader, laying it out there every morning before the market even opens. A really, really powerful tool to start your session off on the right foot. So right now we're offering a trial that you can take advantage of to access this meeting and other meetings throughout the day. We have a meeting at 11 a.m. Eastern where you can sit down with Mike Bellafiore and listen to him talk about what's going on during the morning session, what stocks were in play, what the best trade opportunities were, as well as maybe some things that we're looking at heading into the afternoon session. So I really encourage you to take advantage of that trial.